Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Anne Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. Today's speaker is Ahadi Molel. Ahadi is the program manager at the Four Corners Cultural Program, which was established in 2006 as a sister organization to the Haidam Lutheran Hospital as a direct result of realizing the uniqueness uh, of the Haidam catchment area and its people. Its main goal is to maintain a sense of peaceful coexistence as well as celebration of the worthy cultural values that give identity to this community. Um, at the program, Ahadi is in charge of the planning and designing of the implementation program of the Four Corners Cultural Program. So please join me in welcoming him as he gives his talk, Nipo Kwasa Babu Upo. I am because you are a cultural diversity among four ethnic groups of Africa. Okay. Uh, hi, all. Uh... Everybody, uh, my name is Hadi Molen. Um, I'm working at the Four Corners Cultural Program. Uh, the program was established in, uh, in 2006 as a, as a sister project from Highland Lutheran and Hospital. Uh, the organization is, is located in a um, rural area that is in Manyara region and in Bulu district. Uh, the main purpose of the organization is to maintain the coexistence of four linguistic groups of Africa. And which are these four linguistic groups of Africa now? Uh, in, in this four linguistic group of Africa, we have Kushitik, we have Nilotic, we have Khoisan, and we have Ban. Uh, so uh, the organization now uh, try to link out this four linguistic group despite of their diversities and cultures. Despite of these four linguistic groups of their own culture, but now the organization tried to link it up so that they can stay together peacefully without any conflict. And so why now the organization was established in 2006? There was a research made by one uh, professor in from the University of Dar es Salaam in 2004. And they discovered that the only place in Africa where you can meet these four linguistic groups stay together without any conflict is only the Idom area. And being that the case now, the first director of the Idom Lutheran Institute, that is Dr. Elgin Olsen, uh, with that kind of the uniqueness of the Idom area. So it's very important now to establish a kind of organization that will really protect this uniqueness, uniqueness for the entire. And that's where now in 2006, uh, Four Corners Cultural Program established. So it was established with, with the purpose of protecting the culture of this four linguistic group and the uniqueness of Idom area, because there's no place in Africa where you can meet these four linguistic groups stay together with the you can go to a certain place, you meet only two or you meet only three, but you cannot meet all these four linguistic groups stay together. But it's only idle made. So due to this uniqueness now, uh, the uh, the first director of Hydom Lutheran Hospital tried himself to think out on how now he can protect this kind of the uniqueness that Hydom area has. Is that being the case now? Uh, you know, uh, why these four linguistic groups meet together in Haido Mayra? That's the question now. Why these four linguistic groups met themselves in one area without any conflict? You know, in, 2000, in, 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 one, in 1961, Haido Mayra was a bush area. And the director of the, of the, of the, of the, the, the first director of Haido Mayra meet uh, these four linguistic groups separated, each one has its own place to stay. And he decided to establish the hospital. So the hospital bring these four linguistic groups together. Why? Because they need health care. They need, uh, they have a health problem. So they meet themselves, meet at the hospital, at the meeting point, and stay around or nearby the hospital so that they, they can get a treatment and the other kind of uh, health issues. So having the hospital now has, has influenced has influenced this four linguistic group stay here in Idom, 
without having any conflict and peacefully without any problem. In, uh, having that case now, uh, the, 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 the research made in 2004 shows that the presence of hospital bring this four linguistic group in Haydn and being here for, for quite a long time, since 1961. So what, uh, when I talk about this four linguistic group, you know, uh, the four linguistic group of Africa now, we have a variety of tribes in these linguistic groups. When you look on Kush, uh, we have different types in Kush, Kush, we have different type in Nilotic, we have different type in, uh, in Ant, and we have different type in, uh, in Khoisan. But here in Adam, we have representatives of this four linguistic group. When you look on uh, Khoisan, Khoisan, these are originated from the southern part of Africa. And most of them, you can count them in uh, south, southern part, uh, south Africa and Namibia. But here in Adam, you can meet Hadza bears. Hadza bears are those with a click sound. Those with a clicking sound. You can meet them in the idol. And these are are the very uh, a very big uh, tribal since they are bushmen. They are not keeping food for the future. What they get, they eat. And the very good thing is that we have uh, work distribution among women and men. Uh, women are specifically for um, digging roots and collecting fruits. And men are specifically for hunting and gathering and collecting hand. So when you go to this kind of the, of the uh, when you go to this kind of, uh, of the tribes that represent Kush, that, 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 that represent Khoisan from the southern part of Africa, you can meet them in Idol. There are other uh, three linguistic group with other kind of uh, their activity. So when you look to this Bushmen, they are not keeping food, but they get, they eat and they do always living communally. What they get, uh, one family get, or if one family get food, share with the other family. If one camp get food, share with the other camp. And they do shift it from one place to another, looking for the animals, looking for the fruits, looking for the roots, so that they can, they can eat their daily consumptions. So this is how they are living. And when you look on Kush, here in Kush, we have one tribe that called Iraq. This Iraq, they are originally from Ethiopia. When you look, Iraq is like Ethiopians. Uh, there are many economic activities. They are keeping small number for animals and they cultivate a small area. So th this is their behavior. And they do marry one woman. But we have nilotics. Why Nilotics? Nilotics, uh, they are originated from Southern Sudan and Sudan. And why they are being called in Nilotics is because on the way down to, to East Africa, specifically to Tanzania, they passed around the river Nile. That's why they called it Nilotic. And the Nilotics are pastoralist per se. They do shift it from one place to another looking for the green pasture for their animals. Uh, these nilotics, they are marrying more than one wife. And being the case now, the more uh, animal you have, is the more wife you can marry. And the very interesting things to this kind of the, of the tribe is the one who selects the second wife is the first wife. So if the husband wants to marry, he has to go to the first wife and ask, which, which family I can go for marriage. So they say the first wife, he, he will direct him where, the, where is the safe place for him to marry so that he can get married. And this is kind of the, this is the kind of living that they have. But we have this uh, band. And here in Adam, we have two representatives types from band to uh, linguistic group. And these are Niramba and Nisal. Uh, in Africa, it sounds, the economic activities are always, uh, they do cultivate small area and they keep small number of animals. 
And these are monogamy. They marry one wife. So uh, having that the case now, looking on this four linguistic group, they have their different culture, they have their different way of living, but they make themselves being in idol without any quarrel, without any conflict. If if uh, a kush want a keto goes to nilotic and get keto, and kush give nilotic a maize. You see, they like exchanging. That is uh, some years ago, but now they use cash. But you see now, they have different culture, they have different diversities of on the culture thinking, way of living, but they meet themselves, stay together in Haido without any conflict. That's why I said, uh, the focus will be, we have a ling four linguistic group of Africa here in Haido. They have no any conflict, they have different culture, they have different opinion, they have different way of living, but they are staying together for quite a long time now. And now, that is the essence of establishing four corners cultural program. You see now? But, uh, but the four corners cultural program now went far. And looking now, uh, we, we do always thinking on uh, thinking on protecting this uh, culture of this four linguistic group only, so that the, the, the four, the, the, the future generation will come down and learn more uh, and understand what is, what has been going on with their, with their, with their grandpa and the other like, and, and, and the like. So uh, the four corners cultural program now decided to have something called cultural festival. You know, you know, uh, due to, to due to technological uh, change, now you cannot meeting the, the the real traditional building houses of this four linguistic group in the area, specifically in the in our catchment area. So where you can meet these traditional building houses is only in our place that is in four corners cultural program. So what we did is to to to, to mobilize the student mobilize the young boys to come here and learn on how their forefathers was living, on how the community was believing before, on how their culture is, it has been practiced so that we can still protect the culture of this four linguistic group and maintain the coexistence of the four linguistic group of Africa that meet together in one area that is Haidon. So um, having that the case now, we decided to establish the so-called cultural festival. And this is specifically conducted once per year. And it's around October and September and October. Why cultural festival? You know, you know, uh, uh, young boys, they don't know how to dance the traditional dances. So we invite uh, different dances from this four linguistic group. They came here, they dance. They teach other on the they teach other on their uh, cultures. So if it's Iraq, uh, teach uh, uh, teach. Uh, if it's Khoisan, teach uh, Nilotic. If it's Kush, teach Bantu. They teach each other their culture so that we can continue maintain the peace and harmony and the coexistence that they have been maintained since 1961. And then this cultural festival is where now. The young ladies and young boys will learn on how uh, the tradition the, the traditional dances is being made by their fathers, and we go further in, and to the schools and prepare some young boys to dance the traditional the, the dances so that they can continue maintain this kind of the, of the dances that they had before. Why? Because we we need to protect that the culture that is good culture. The bad one, we, we say, no, we don't like. Like female genital mutilations, we do uh, speaking on prohibiting. That, that is bad culture. But answers, uh, good uh, norms and taboos, we do, uh, we do insist to, to continue because it teach students, it teach young boys, it teach boys, uh, young girls, so that we can have a good community in the future. But now, uh, CCP went further. And, and say now, we have been uh, protecting this culture of this four linguistic group for quite a long time. So in 
now they decided to, to, to go further, uh, not only to protect in our, uh, the culture of this whole linguistic group, but to go further on looking on social welfare. So in 2019 now, we come up with, with, the, with, the, with the slogan said, uh, a culture for social welfare. So we protect the culture, then we go further to the social welfare. But because you can't protect the culture, but uh, still the community is suffering from having clean and safe water. You can protect the culture, but still the community suffering from hunger. You can protect the culture, but still the community are suffering from vulnerable diseases. So it's all no. Now we need to protect the culture. Then we go further from protecting the culture. We go further to help the community. Now in 2010, we had a slogan said, culture for social welfare. We protect the culture of this linguistic group, that is the uniqueness of Idom area, that the four linguistic group of Africa made together with the conflict. But we go, we, we, we go further by establishing the social project, the social program. And one among of these social programs was, I can mention a few because we have so many, uh, one among these four, uh, one among uh, this uh, program, uh, swash and wash program. Swash and wash program. Uh, wash program is water hygiene and sanitation. You know, at, around the hydrogen area, you cannot meet uh, a, a clean and safe water at all. So what we did is to drill a borehole. Uh, to these four linguistic groups. So we drill a borehole to Hadzabe, we drill a borehole to oh, oh, Ilotic, that is Datoga, we need a borehole to Kush, that is Iraq, we need a borehole to Band, that is Iran and Sanz. Why? Because they need safe and clean water. Despite of protecting the culture, but they have their social problem. That's the one of their social problems was what then we had a bit of uh, drilling more than 40 plus borehole around our catchment area. But still, we have the scarcity because population increase, kettles are increased, kettles need water, people need water. So we, we tried to, to, to uh, at least to, 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 to reduce the scarcity of water around, the, around the, our catchment area. But also we, we go further on Helping the community on issue of hygiene, you know, you know, you know, hygiene is a very, it's a very unique thing in the community. Since uh, you you make people uh, being away from uh, spread diseases like cholera and other things. So we had a campaign on how now people can wash their body, wash their dishes, wash um, wash children, uh, wash their hand after toilet, go, going out from toilet. So all hygiene promotion, we had a campaign uh, for four years, teaching the community on the importance of hygiene, especially in a populated area. But also we, 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 we went further on looking on how we can help, because one, of, one among of this, uh, one among of this, one among of the uh, economic activity of this uh, full linguistic group where some of some uh, farmers we have some pastoralists. So we had some programs that help them on how uh, they can get more yield so that we can make sure we can have this food security to their home. So we had um, uh, we had uh, a campaign of teaching them on using the proper fertilizer, the proper seeds during the plantation, the, during uh, the, the planting period, so that they can have high yield to, to make sure that the food security in their farming is available throughout the year. But also we, we went further and looking on how we help them on education. You know, education is very important. Getting the community is very important. Especially educating women, you know, educating women in the community. So we had the emphasis on how now they can make sure that they educate. Uh, they, 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 we emphasis on taking girls to school. So 
So we did that and the community accept takes our girls to school because previous uh, fathers and mothers were denied to take girls to school because they said when you take girls to school, sometimes she get pregnant and she, 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 then she go back home. And they make them tired of, uh, of young girls getting pregnant. So they said, well, no, no, no need of taking girls to school because when you take girls to school, sometimes she gets pregnant and she go back home. And that was one of the quarrels made uh, parents not taking them to school. But after getting the taking the after getting the knowledge on the importance of getting uh, girls to school, now we saw that they are now the girls are now taken to school. When you go to when you go to school and look at the ratio between men's and girls, girls are so many like uh, are so many compared to men. So we see that now, how the community has accepted to take girls to school. But after having so many girls to school, we met one challenge that uh, during the menstrual period, uh, girls are, are suffering since they don't have pads to, to make them safe during that kind of a period. So we established this the, 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 other, the other kind of uh, campaign that is menstrual hygiene campaign of distributing the pads Special to, to secondary school girls. Uh, why? Because you meet a, a secondary school in a very remote area where a girl cannot get a pad or cannot have the money to, to buy a pad. So we 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 we, we mobilize some of the donors so that we, we can get the renewable, renewable one, renewable pad, so that she can use it uh, maybe for six months for four months, so that during that kind of the period, she can be safe and can continue with the study. Why? Because we discovered that uh, previous, some of the girls were dropping out of the school. Why? Because when she won that kind of the, of the, of the situation, and the situation met her at the class, boys are starting laughing at her. So she gets shame and she cannot go back to school. And that was a very bad thing. So we 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 give uh, we provide education to girls and we provide education to boys that, that there are normal things so no 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 need of laughing at her uh, rather we, we need to help her so that she can uh, get get much better. So we had kind of campaign uh, so that we can make sure that our community is going far away for uh, uh, on the matter of getting education. But we support the We support also building uh, dormitories for girls because you can meet. Uh, you can meet uh, girls are are going far or are coming far from school. So we building dormitories so that we can reduce the distance from home to, to school. So we, we we built some dormitories to some of the school, and this is depending on the specific donor that we get. If we get donors specific to to, to dormitories, we we do it, but we 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 went further on helping the uh, helping uh, some of the school with a uh, very minimal number of teachers. We employ some teachers so that they can support them. Uh, this is specific to this four linguistic group. Also, we had um, gender 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 based violence uh, program. Uh, this was specific on providing uh, legal education to girls, uh, legal education to women, so that they can have land rights, so that they can have rights when they, are, they get abused by any person in the community. And this went further by teaching some of the community members on the legal issue so that they can get assistance while they are at the community before uh, met their legal officer at their office. Then we provided a legal service at our office for free. And this is, we go far, not only protecting culture, but we need to protect this community out of culture. You know, the community was not, uh, is not bonded by only culture. It's bonded by a, a lot of things and a lot of challenges. And so we saw it's very important now to, to protect this community on uh, kind of um, other things apart from, from protect them, protect their cultures. But also we had uh, um, the, current, the current program that we have is, Biocha program. Biocha is, uh, I don't think if everyone knows, but Biocha is an acronym of um, of the word biomass and charcoal. 
biomass and charcoal. And we prepare this charcoal for different purposes. I cannot explain because it's a, it's a, it's a very big, uh, uh, it's a broad uh, knowledge. But we prepare this, uh, we prepare this charcoal, we take these remains of plant and animal, and we prepare like a charcoal. And this charcoal can be used for animal, and it can be used for, for to the farm, and can be used as an alternative source of energy. And this kind of, uh, of the program is also cutting across environmental issues because uh, taking out a, bi a biomass, we, we, protect, we protect the environment, but also uh, burning the charcoal, burning the charcoal reduce uh, global warming. And that's very important for us. So uh, those are some of the specific things that we have. So uh, as I've said, uh, the biodiversity of these four linguistic group uh, of this, uh, the biodiversity of this uh, four, uh, four linguistic group of Africa, it, it means that this four linguistic group of Africa, they have different activity, they have different cultures, but they meet together, stay together without any conflict. And that means that the Toga, uh, Nilotic depend to Kush, Kush depend to Khoisan, Khoisan depend to Bantu. And these four linguistic groups depend to each other. And that being the case, that's why we have the slogan said, I am because you are. Why? Because if Kush is there and Nilotic is not there, this all this, this all four linguistic groups, they depend to each other. That's why our motto is I am because you are. And in Swahili, we say Nipo. Thank you very much. Maybe if there is any question so far. I think Andrew had a question already, so I'll go straight to him. Ahadi, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. It's great to hear about somebody who's sort of been doing all of this work. Um, Ahadi, are you a member of any of these four ethno-linguistic groups? Are you from Haidom? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, you know, you know, you know, the very, the very, the very unique thing is that every African, every African, are from these four linguistic groups. So every African you meet in Africa, is, is belong to this, is belong to this four linguistic, uh, four ethnic linguistic group. Right. So your question now, I had, I, I am a Maasai. And falling in a logic group. And a very bad thing is that I'm not the originated from uh Haidom area. I'm from Warusha, but one among of the of these four ethnic linguistic groups, I'm from Nilotic group. And Ahadi, how long have you been involved with the Four Corners uh, cultural program? It's eight years now. Eight years. And are, are you based in Haidom or are you in Arusha? Normally, no, 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 no. Eight years here in Edo. And so, at the introduction of your talk, you gave us sort of a lot of different information about these four different groups and how they lived their lives and where they came from. I'm interested in how you learned that information. Where did you where Where did you guys learn that information? Okay, you know, you know, you know, the organization was. Uh, before the establishment of, uh, establishment of organization, uh, we had the uh, we have mapping, we have mapping process. So we they called yeah, uh, although I was not there, it was 2006. I was still in the school. So uh, they, they 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 gathered this information to to, to the oldest men, but also they they review uh, literature reviews of these four linguistic groups. So when you're being employed in this uh, in this organization, and you are in the, in, we are in the position of what what position I am, you need to have this information because this information is the organization. If you don't want, if you don't know how to explain this information to, to different people, the position is not you are you are not fit to that kind of the position, you know. So I, I continue learning the first year, the second year, and I still learning, learning and learning and learning and understand 
what the what is the organization, where the organization is coming from, what the focus, what is the objective, what is the mission, what is the objectives. You know, you know, I always um I'm the one also writing some of the proposals. So I need to, to know this information because a very important information to 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 to, to be provided to the people. So so a lot of this came from going out and doing interviews with with people in the communities, but also looking at some of what's already been been written and been published. Okay, that's yes. uh, that's that's really cool. That's very interesting. Yes. All right. I will say really thank you for this talk because it's been really interesting. Um, before I go to Bonnie, I'll briefly ask a question of my own. So you say that the, your, uh, one of the major scopes is bringing in young people, boys and girls, to learn more about their culture. Um, how do you reach them? Do you go to the schools or do you go into the villages? Like how, how do you connect to the young people? Oh, good. Uh, you, you know, you know, you know, you know. Uh, as the organization, we are uh, we are working with the different schools, uh, and in the schools, uh, it's, it's where mostly you can get uh, young boys and girls. You know, but also we have a uh, meeting. We have village meeting. The village meeting, we meet uh, uh, fathers and mothers. But it's where now you can introduce something that uh, attractive to the to the parents, so that they can take children to to the organization. So we 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 have uh, we have various uh, ways of meeting these boys and young boys and girls. We have street uh, street walk. We have different uh, uh, different plays. Uh, playing ground at our 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 place. So this playground attracts young boys and girls to come here. And when they come, we teach them. But we have different program in school, especially the gender, the gender, the gender, the gender, the gender program. We have the menstrual hygiene campaign. Uh, we have different campaign on uh, teaching uh, career choice. We have the campaign of uh, teaching on importance of get, uh, taking girls to school. So through this campaign, attract some young boys and girls to come to our office and learn more about their culture. But, but not only that, we, we promote something called uh, domestic tourism. You know, you know, you know, in Tanzania, we have, uh, we, are, we, are, we are one of the richest country on issue of tourism. Tour, tourism. So we, 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 we do emphasize this uh, student to come at the office as a learning center, a learning center, a research center, a, a project center, so that they can learn more about their culture and they can learn other things apart from culture. We have different programs they can learn and help them in the future. So we get students, we get young boys and girls to the state, to get them through community meeting, to get them at the school. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Really even even in church, yeah. we go we go also in church. Sometimes we had some program in the uh, in the training in church. So in church also we meet uh, young boys and girls, and we 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 we, we do emphasize them to come and learn for the uh, for the uh, for their heart. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks so much for the work that you do. It's it involves a lot of aspects. I can see, you know. Uh, so, I, so I was uh, well. Actually, first, since you mentioned tourism, I wanted to share a link in the chat with our local heritage festival that the Museum of Northern Arizona. I live in Northern Arizona, and here we also have many different ethno linguistic groups, and so. Uh, it, it this is a little bit more on um, outward facing toward for for other communities to participate and learn about the local cultures, but you might get some ideas looking at some of the activities they do. It is a little, I'd say, a little more tourism focused than inward towards the community. Um, I had a question about actually how how it has been getting Datog girls to school. My experience in Mbulu was in the 1990s, and it seemed very few Datog uh, girls were going to school. So that seems like that must have been a particular challenge. I'm wondering how, how you dealt with that, your program. Yeah, OK. OK, uh, it's, it's a nice question. 
Uh, maybe maybe I can I can add something that you, you know you know in the organization, uh, what we did is uh, we 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 make the community trusting on the organization, the community trust the organization. Why? Because what we did is actual that the community need. That's the first thing that we 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 I met in this kind of organization that. The community trust the organization. A very good thing, uh, maybe I can I can share some experience of what I have here. In the organization also we have the dwelling houses of this four linguistic group. Also we have a small museum here. So if the if these young boys and girls come here, they, they learn on their dwelling houses, but also they can view some artifacts in the small museum that we have. That's on one part. But on the other part is how do we now influence the doctors to go to school? Uh, you know, you know, you know the the the, the, the doctor is the doctor, uh, in the doctor community was not they so it's it's not so hard to to influence them to go to school. Why? Because uh, some of the of the educated man are uh, now coming back to, to the community, so they see uh, the educated one has some of the success in the in the life. So influence them now to take uh, children to school. Uh, the, the most challenging things was to take girls to school because some of the girls went to school then they come back with a pregnant. That was the main challenge. But having this, uh, uh, having these uh, things that protect pregnant, having a, a health education, uh, healthy health education on the issue of pregnancy and the other thing. Now, um, some of the parents are now uh, keen to take women to school. And the most community that was challenging to, to go to school was Khoisan, that is Hadab. Why? Because they do shift it from one place to another. So it's not easy to get them at the place. Sometimes you go, you get them, they go. Um, fathers have gone for hunting. Fathers have gone for collecting hunt. Mothers have gone for collecting fruits. Mothers have gone for digging roots. So that was very hard. And you know, you know, Bushmen are not uh, so much uh, uh, like to associate with other, with other communities, especially when you take them to boarding school, you know? So that was the most challenge. But for the Togas, uh, it, was, it was very easy because what we did is to bring those educated ones to the community and talk to their community. So if they, they, they talk themselves, they do understand more than we talk to them. So we go to, to, to some of the schools, we get the, the Togas uh, students from university, from colleges, and we bring them back to the community so that they can talk themselves with their own language. And that was so much influenced them to take children to school because they saw, oh, it is possible now. A, a woman can go to school, a man can go to school, everyone can go to school and everyone can get success. But the challenge was to poison that is hard to make because they do shift it from one place to another. So it's easy to meet them on, at one place. So it was like, uh, it was like uh, not so much easy, but we, 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 we influenced the government to build the school at their village. And that was a bit uh, helping us to, uh, that sometimes them, themselves they go they go, they, they leave children to school and they go for, for the hunting and gathering. Thanks. Uh, the, in fact, we have some references. Well, first of all, let me share this reference, which talks about how preserving language uh, can help um, preserve uh, health impacts. But we have, uh, help me out here, uh, uh, Andrew, it, was it McDowell who had some unpublished, yeah, we have this unpublished paper about the history of the Hadza, and he talks about how in the 70s, there were some measles outbreaks at the schools, and a lot of Hadza children died in the schools. And I know in the 90s, there were some cases of Hadza girls who became pregnant going to school, even one girl who had gone to an all-girls school, <laughs> because of course, sometimes it's the teachers who get the girls pregnant. Um, I don't know if donors are still focusing on um, providing um, single sex all girls schools, if that's been a way to help encourage more girls go to school or 
these problems with the teachers are still causing some parents concern. Um, but yeah, if we, so, you know, we have um, some, you know, not, not just oral history, but some some written down histories of, of the area that might be helpful for you in understanding the, you know, people's memories <laughs> that affect how they react to the schools. I also have an unpublished paper on female genital mutilation. You may know Ruth Mathias, who, who worked on that. I don't know if that ever got published. Hadi, um, you had talked about some of your outreach uh, efforts uh, going and doing uh, these uh, outreach efforts in communities. I imagine you guys sitting down in... Uh, like at the Uwanjawa Pira of maybe certain certain communities or maybe sitting down under the trees. And you said that you speak to sometimes the uh, parents and they uh, and that's sort of a way to encourage young people to come and to learn about their own cultures. So you've sort of answered like how you go about connecting with the different communities. What are some of the arguments that you make? What are some of the what are some of the things that you tell the parents when you speak to them? to get the the children interested how how do you how do you convince them what what kind of things do you say yeah okay uh, you, you 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 know you know you know now 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 um uh technology uh technology is like um uh, going far when in the in the in the in the very remote area the technology has reached there so uh, in our in our center, we have different playing ground. One of the uh, one of the attracting things that uh, parents want to, to bring their children here is to come and play in the the, the modern the modern play, not the stick one, uh, not the the, hard, the targeting one, but they play um, uh, football, they play basket, they do. That's kind of thing. So when they come here now, before they start playing, we teach them about their culture. We pass them through this four linguistic group building houses. We pass them through our local museum that we have here. That's one thing that attracts the, the, the parents, especially from here. And that's also being one of uh, of our 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 advertisement advertisement of our organization through the local community. That's the first thing. But the other thing is, you know, you know, you know, we have a program called the Career Trace, Career Trace program. Uh, in 2012, we, 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 we had a local, not a research one, but a, a local, a local, a local, a local thinking on, uh, on thinking that what are the students, what students think about who he, he or she want to be after the school. So we, we go through our we go through six to seven secondary and primary school and take the 10 best students and ask them who do you want to be after completing this school. So most of the answers was I want to be a teacher, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a doctor. You see why? Because he or she do meet with a nurse, she do meet with a teacher, and she do meet with a, 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 a doctor. No any other professional that he can meet on the way, uh, on their daily uh, life. And we say so. So now uh, for five to 10 years to come, no, we cannot get any other professional rather than getting teachers, doctors, and nurses. So now what do we can we do now is to take those 10 best students and bring them at the center. Here at the center, we have a very big, a very huge place where we can accommodate more than 2,000 people. So we bring this student to 10 best students of each class to each school. So we, can, we accommodate here maybe a thousand of students here. And invite different professionals. We invite lawyers, we invite accountants, we invite nurses, we invite doctors, we invite teachers, we invite police, polices, we invite uh, uh, 
uh, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the man. We invite every aspect of professional that we had in this kind of a world so that they can teach this student on which subject you need to concentrate so that you can be the one. And that now has bring out, has, 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 has bring out a difference now. When you go around the community, you can meet lawyers, you can meet accountants, you can meet teachers, and it's quite different from previous. You see now? So, 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 uh, as this program now be implemented, we implement once per year. So once per year, we call them. So this kind of the program, first of all, increase competition at each class. Why? Because everyone to everyone want to be 10 best students of each class so that he can come here and get that kind of education. You see? That's the first thing that the program had. But the, 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 the second thing that the program had is this attracts so many students to come to the office to see what is going on there. Once, because once they go back to school, they do, uh, they do, they do explain, they do making a story of the good news that they meet at the office. So this also attracts some of the students telling their parents, they want to go to Four Corners Cultural Program so that I can learn about the culture, I can learn about my choice, career, uh, career choice, I can learn any other things on menstrual hygiene and other things. So this also, this kind of the program that we had attract also children to come here because if they come as a group, we do teach them on the issue of gender, we do teach them on the issue of hygiene, we do teach them on the issue of menstrual, we do teach them. So we do teach them be, before we take them to the cultural issues. Why? Because we say we had culture for social welfare. So we need to protect culture, but also we need to protect other things out of the culture. But the other thing that attracts uh, students to come in. But we have the, the, the specific problem, maybe like the Biocha program. Biocha program, we planted a fruit trees, more than 10,000 fruit trees around our catchment area. Why? Because uh, we, we, we need to, 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 to make sure that the, the student health are, are, more, are, more, are more improved since uh, some, of the, some of the schools, they, Students are taking food without any kind of a fruit uh, beside the food. So we 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 we, we, plant, we planted fruit trees to 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 each, maybe um, uh, more than forty something fruit for each school. This is will help in the future. Not now, but after the fruit now become it out. Now the student will will start getting food. So with this program, we do take some of the students come here at the center and learn. And before learning about the Planting the fruit trees, we we learn, the, we learn about the planting fruit trees, and we take them through our 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 daily notices, teach them about their community, and take them to our museum. So what do we did now, and what attracted some young boys and young girls to come here is we connected our program with the culture. Culture goes with the program. Program goes with the culture. You see. So if you we have the culture program, we go with it. If we have the program, we go with the culture. If we have a culture event, we go with the program. Like if we we, we have a cultural festival, we also uh, implement some of our program, teaching the teaching students on menstrual, teaching the community on um, proper CD, proper fertilizer. So we connect culture and developments. That's why I said. As if from 2010, our slogan changed from protecting the culture of all linguistic group and being culture for social welfare. That means you take the program with the culture, we take culture with the program. That's all. I appreciate the bringing the students to show different professions. I remember, I'm, I'm old, so I remember being a young girl. And the only women jobs I ever knew was nurse, teacher, secretary. It's it seemed like that the, all the women I knew were one, either a ho homemaker, nurse, 
<laughs> Secretary, you know, it seems so limiting, but I didn't know anything else. So it's it's so helpful to see other people, people who look like you doing other jobs when you're when you're a teenager. So helpful. Okay, I'll try. I have a, I have a question of my own. Um, I'm I'm interested. Uh, at some point, you were talking about you were talking about there's good culture and there's bad culture, and we get rid of the bad culture and we encourage the good culture. And I'm interested in how we decide what is good culture and what is bad culture. Who who makes this decision? in 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 the within your program when you decide okay this is something good that we want to encourage and this is something bad that we want to discourage how how do you decide uh these things yes uh you you know you know you know uh we have a we we as a hey okay. uh you you know what uh, you know we have some kind of uh, uh, rules and regulations that guide the organization. Apart from implementing different cultures, uh, no no. Apart from protecting the culture or and implementing different activities around our catchment area, but we do follow the uh, rules and regulations of the country. So. What decided us to say this is bad culture? The culture that pro, 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 uh, the culture that is uh, our, that is infringing the law of the country, that's the bad culture for us. The culture that is going beyond, going against the human right, that is bad culture for us. So what decided us to say this is bad culture is the law. We decided decided to say this bad culture is the human rights regulation and and laws that uh, our country interfere. For instance, for instance, uh, beating women, beating women. You know, some of some of the tribes in Tanzania, uh, a women need to be beaten by a man so that he can feel that the man is he love her. You see. But that infringes the human right. And that is bad culture for us. Because beating someone is the infringement of his right. And that is totally discouraged by our organization. But female genital mutilation, this is prohibited by our law. And being prohibited by our law, that is bad culture for us. So there are some cultures that are totally prohibited by law, but there are some cultures that are highly going against human rights. And we cannot encourage them because we do focus on protecting culture and helping uh, the country to meet the goals through our program activities. So the decision was not made by the management or the board. But the decision was made by the, the laws and regulations that we have been abiding by, by, by the country, abiding by the, 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 the international regulations. I think I have, I, I have answered you. Um, so those were all the questions for today. Uh, thank you very much, Ahadi, for your presentation. It was really interesting to hear about everything the program does and uh, the results of the books, uh, both for the culture and the community. I would just like to remind everyone that all of the webinars are being recorded and are um, then placed on the YouTube channel. Um, and all entries to the webinar series are also part of the Rift Valley Network Bibliography. Looking ahead, the next webinar will be on January the 24th, uh, which the title will be announced in the newsletter. So with that, I wish everyone a happy holiday period and I look forward to seeing you at our next webinar.